Now joining us is a British meteorologist, Professor Sir Brian Hoskins, chair of the Grantham Institute for Climate Change and the Environment at Imperial College London. He's been playing a major role in climatology discussions with award-winning research in the area. Professor, thank you so much for joining me. When we think about this summer's heat wave in particular, how much can we attribute it to climate change? You have to say that when we get the extremes we've had this summer, you need basically two ingredients. You need the right weather pattern, and you also need this background of a rising temperature. And what we've had this year is the two put together where there have been the right weather patterns to give hot temperatures, but then on the background of the rising temperature associated with global warming, then we've had the extremes that we've seen. So yes, we can say without global warming, we wouldn't have seen the extremes we've had this year. Okay, so this is maybe why we haven't seen temperatures this hot before. The question then becomes, will we see them this hot again? Should we just expect our summers to continue getting hotter due to the two forces you just described? Well, that's right. So the two forces I've described means one, there's a sort of random element to it. You sometimes get that weather pattern, and then maybe for five years you don't get it, but then it, it comes again. But when we get that, we can expect ever hotter temperatures to go with these hot summers. So um, in, in the UK, we had a very hot summer that people of my age remember in 1976. But when you get down to it, actually the extremes were about four degrees lower than they were this time. So it's just got that much hotter. And of course, we've talked about just heat events so far, but there are plenty of other kinds of extreme weather. Do these same patterns hold true for deep freezes, larger storms, other kind of meteorological events that are exacerbated by a changing climate? Yes, I mean, the, the other one that really occurs to me is the floods, the floods and drought situation with places like the Mediterranean, which are normally dry and hot in the summer, this, the, the amount of water available for growing crops and actually carrying on things is, is really very low. This summer is, is very bad. But then if we go on to the floods, there have been many examples around the world of floods uh, in the last few months. Um, Australia has been devastated on the east coast of Australia. Uh, they've had floods in China. Um, so when it's the story that it may not rain that much, in fact, some places may get less rain than they're used to, but when it rains, it rains harder, and that's what we're seeing because that um, those really high rainfall events are causing chaos around the world. Chaos indeed, and it raises the question of corrective action or mitigation. How far gone are we in terms of damage already done to the atmosphere that th some of these weather changes will be permanent? And to what extent will the pursuit of net zero of reducing carbon emissions actually help to, to ease some of these dramatic effects? Well, we've already had a dramatic impact. Um, and the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is gone up by 50% from what it was. And that's very important in giving us the warming. And we're committed to more warming than we've had already. And the sea level is rising, and that's causing great chaos. And in fact, whatever we do, the sea level will go, and go on rising for many centuries. However, we do have a sort of solution in our hands to keep this within bounds that we can mostly manage in most parts of the world. So if we act now, and that means now not thinking about it and saying, oh, well, it's difficult now, but we'll start in 10 years' time. If we start now and we really do say, well, the target must be, particularly for the developed world, to be down to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by, say, 2050 or so, the middle of the century, then we can stop adding to the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And while ever we go on adding to the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, the climate will change. But we do have the ability to hold those greenhouse gases uh, rises to a certain level. So the answer is in our hand. It, it, it's going to get more extreme than it is now. I'm afraid that's inevitable. But the question is, are we going to keep it within the range, the regions that we think we can manage and cope with in general? Otherwise, we are looking at a situation where I think climate, the changing climate making life so difficult 
is going to lead to mass immigration and it's going to lead to more strife between countries and inside countries. So we've just got to hold it. We can hold it now within bounds that we can probably cope with. Okay, so it's not necessarily about making things better, but preventing them from getting worse. Thank you to Professor Sir Brian Hoskins, Chair of the Grantham Institute for Climate Change and the Environment at Imperial College London.